thank you for that introduction. Um, to kind of go into a bit more detail as to what the ADS is, we were established in 1996. We are hosted at the University of York in England. We are a core trust accredited uh, <clears throat> repository and we currently hold over 40, 40 terabytes of uh, digital data and we believe in uh, preservation through migration so that way none of our data becomes obsolete and is available forever. If we kind of look at what we actually hold, we hold over 5,000 uh, collections. Of that, most of it, it would be our standard collections that we would say would be from excavations. But we have in, uh, a large number of special collections, library collections, and high-speed two collections, which I'll kind of go into a bit more. But you can really see here how the number of high speed two archives that we're sorry getting may impact what we hold and what we know about archives and what we're getting from them. If we look at what's actually in each of these archives though and the specific data types, you can see that most of these are images and text. But we do have a variety of other types of data. So I'd like to kind of talk about those and to kind of make sure we're all on the same page. This is what a report looks like, yes, but we get more than just reports for text, such as uh, dating examples. So over the years, we've gotten uh, quite a large amount of text data. It may look like we've got nothing in the beginning, but that's purely because of how much we now get, primarily through OASIS and other methods of ingest. If we go to images, you may be familiar with these kinds of things, lots of trenches in our archives, but we also have finds ones, such as this one from Prittlewell. If, in fact, we've been getting so many images as of late, I've had to split up the graph so that way you can really see that we're getting nearly 10,000 images per year over the past few years. If we look at more site-related uh, ones, what we have here is a section, or we can have other types of site drawings through CAD. If we look at GIS, which is often used to record these same types of things, it can be quite this simple, or it can be much more complex. We've got a wide variety of these different site uh, data that's given to us. And primarily, it is vector, but it's not really consistent in terms of when we're getting it, how we're getting it uh, throughout the years. We also get a number of spreadsheets. This is a very simple one because I didn't think you guys wanted to see a long ream of numbers. But we do also get databases, which can be really highly complex and interlinked. And while this is slightly misleading because you get more spreadsheets and the databases is just in one, there the amount that we get, it is increasing, but it's still nowhere near the amount that we're getting for text and images. 3D data, we also are getting an increased amount of this, but again, it's nearly 800 per year. So, and that can be various components. This is 3D in general. So photogrammetry, LIDAR, laser scanning, all of that. But, you may have noticed there's a few things I didn't show you. And I've heard it mentioned a number of times, such as geophysics, which hasn't made its way into our digital archives. And um, there are some other various types of data types as well. And I kind of wanted to look into, do we know why and what is worthy of deposit for these depositors? So we do know a few things. We know that we limit the file types that are given to us, and that's partially to in or able to do that my preservation through migration. We want to make sure that we're not going with super unique ones that we can't then migrate, change, etc. We know that it costs time and money in order to kind of go through and make the metadata for all of this uh, different data types. And we also know that there's a selection and retention. And one of the interesting things about High Speed 2 is that they're required to tell us what their selection and retention is. So high speed two, what is it? I've mentioned it before, but it's the UK's largest infrastructure project. It's currently go, um, being dug from London all the way up to Birmingham thus far, and will potentially continue on um, as it is. It's currently the largest archeological dig in Europe, and we have a lot of data from it. 
So if we look at the deposit trends that are in this archive selection and retention, we know that a lot of this information that we're just not getting is because it's being incorporated into the overarching reports. So they're taking the specialist information, they're taking the geophys, the survey data, and then they're just putting it into the report and just giving us the report. Um, we know that we're getting this GIS data, but that GIS data may actually be an interpretation from the geophysics. And because it's seen as the interpretation, it's superseded, there's no need to give us the geophysics. Uh, there may be more commercial reasons behind that, but this is at least what they're telling us. Um, if we look at photos, we've got lots and lots of photos, and it seems like when it comes to the actual excavation, the selection retention seems like we'll just give you everything that we know about. But there's a number of photos that we aren't actually getting. Pre-excavation, working shots, reinstatement photos, site conditions, those kinds of things. They're seen as not deposit worthy, and those tend to be excluded for one reason or another. We will occasionally get working shots, and I find those really quite interesting to see what is currently being done with archaeologists in the field, but most of the time it's not seen as deposit worthy. If we get really specific in terms of like the data types, uh, it tends to be kind of, we'll give it to you if it's in the project design. If it was decided at the very beginning, we'll give you our geophysics. Otherwise, we will just give you what we see as the end result. And it's kind of the same with video and audio. They only want a really refined kind of thing when it comes to those uh, bits. If we look at the 3D data, it really kind of depends on what it is. So as a we've got requirements that we require for photogrammetry, for example, we require the source photos, um, but whether or not we get the ortho photo that tends to go in between, uh, sorry, whether or not we get the 3D model that tends to be the in between of the source photos to the ortho photo, which is seen as the end, that really depends on the project design. And it's really the ortho photo that most often they just want to give us. And sometimes they don't even want to give us the source photos. Um, laser scan and LIDAR data, it's the same kind of struggle. We're communicating with the depositors who are often, it's the end of the project, and they're like, it wasn't told to us in the beginning, but we're, we, we haven't changed our guidelines that quickly. So um, it's, it's one of those kind of back and forth. And so really, I, what I want to kind of highlight is that most people seem to be going towards just the report, just the end product. And those types of things tend to be quite locked in. If we look at what we hold right now, we currently hold over 50% of all gray lit in England. And in some cases, we hold over 90%. But if we look at the archives that are associated with that, it's with this example here, 1%. We suspect it might be a little bit higher now, but that number is still quite low. If we only rely on what's in the report, there's a number of issues. What if uh, new lines of thinking come along to kind of better ex uh, interpret things, but we don't have that source material to be able to relook at it? And if it's locked somewhere else and not publicly available, then we won't be able to go back and reevaluate past excavations that we may no longer have access to those sites anymore. So thank you. <laughs>